Um, and, uh, you know, as a result, um, they got way behind and it's actually done quite a lot of economic damage, more than one would have thought necessary. In, in, in this country where, you know, I mean, we sort of all all the restrictions have basically been removed unless you travel. And if you travel, you're probably more likely to come across problems, if you like, on your destination than you are uh, returning to the UK. But otherwise, I mean, uh, there are people, it's interesting because there are people still wearing masks. Um, but, you know, whenever I go out, um, you know, either into a, a bar or a supermarket to go shopping or whatever, I don't wear a mask anymore. And but also, you talked about the effectiveness, and you mentioned we have to treat this, and I thought, I thought the word treatment jumped out at me because that's been highly controversial uh, globally. And there's like mm. the American Frontline Doctors uh, Association and so on who are advocating for early treatment for people. As you mentioned, we need to treat this like a cold or a flu or whatever, that there are uh, proven low-risk effective treatments that ha were with that were withheld, that were even uh, forbidden by uh, different jurisdictions, that doctors couldn't treat their patients, that sort of thing. So what I mean is that um, they are not working and their employers are, are being paid money to pay them not to work. And the idea really is that at least these people don't bolster the unemployment statistics. Sorry, that's me being cynical. But that, <laughs> that I think basically is, is what it's about. Um, but with, there are shortages of labor now. And you can't get, um, uh, for example, people to drive trucks. Um, there are not enough truck drivers. And the result is that if you go into the supermarket, um, there are an awful lot of things missing from the shelves. Um, it's a real problem, actually. So the, the logistics are all being fouled up. Um, on top of that, of course, we had Brexit and France in particular has been incredibly bureaucratic over the whole thing, which is so anyway. So you can see that wage inflation, I think uh, the most recent uh, number is something like going up 7.3 percent. I mean, you know, this is this is quite a squeeze on on, on, on businesses and it just shows how you know, there's such a shortage of employable labor, if I can put it that way. But it's but it's an artificial shortage. That's the whole thing. This whole last yeah. year and a half. I mean, you talked to us about a about a year and a half ago. the The title of our interview was "The Whole of Europe is Shutting Down," and we there was a graphic there that we showed this like this this wildfire sweeping across the globe. This whole thing we've been saying, oh, you know, COVID, uh, the the or the the pandemic uh, killed our economy and everything. And it's like, and then we have some viewers questions that I'm sure will flow nicely from that. Of course, um, I'm trying to remember what I said on uh, you know on, on that interview, but um, and I can't quite remember what the question was. But I I, th I think what you're getting at is, um, you know, the current situation, um, if you like, the the moving parts that got us here and how this is likely to play out. Yeah. I mean, am I right in that? Okay. Yeah, yeah. The question, I think, started from what's the reality about inflation and what's really driving it? And, and, you, and your response initially was, well, how much time have you got? And then you mm -hmm. started laying out how we've, how we've right. fueled the fire of, that's led us to this kind of inf price inflation or monetary inflation. Okay, I'll try and, try and keep it as brief and as simple as possible. That's all right. Our, our viewers are just, we all... <laughs> Are, are um, at your at your disposal to please <laughs> go ahead. The, yeah, uh, thanks. The the problem um, basically is that inflation is not as the Fed or any other central banker is telling us. I mean, they're telling us that uh, prices rise because there is an imbalance. If, and even BlackRock, I think from memory, was sort of contracted to be in there to um, provide um, ETFs, if you like, which the Fed could could uh, could buy. I don't know what, what what extent they've done. But the point is, there was a massive surge in the quantity of money. And if you look at broad money, and believe it or not, I know everybody talks about M2, but you've also got an M3, which very few people look at. But I think that's increased roughly 25% annualized since then. This is huge, absolutely huge. You can't do that without an impact on prices. For the very simple reason that you've got lots and lots more money chasing exactly the same amount of goods. On top of that, we got a complete logistics foul up, um, you know, containers in all the wrong places and ports shut and all the rest of it because of COVID lockdown sort of almost doubled 
I mean, some things a lot more, some things a lot less. Um, you know, sort of in roughly the year that followed, it's been consolidating sideways in, in recent months. Um, but with all the money printing and it's continuing because um, the budget deficit, um, we're looking at three trillion this year, the US budget deficit. Now, that's on the CBO's forecasts, which were made before um, all the extra spending that we've been talking about. You've got a trillion that's sort of gone through, um, I think, in the last two weeks. Mm-hmm. You've also got talking about infrastructure. And the hope is that um, taxes will pay for some of that and so on. But we're talking another three and a half trillion.